this is a small grove that has survived the destruction that one will see in this forest in many parts. When I was a child, this forest was beginning to be invaded. This is the time when I was seeing the bonfires here, as trees this big were literally put on fire to make way for the commercial plantations. But when my mother was a young woman, this forest was intact, beautiful. An indigenous forest is an ecosystem. It's comprised of many organisms and different types of lives, uh, of animals and plants. And right here, you can see that we are standing against a very tall tree. It's an older tree. You can see it has been here for some time. But it's also home to many other species of plants. Small ones, bigger ones, all types. Finding home on this tree. You don't see this kind of ecosystem in an exotic plantation where trees are planted essentially for commercial purposes. They are harvested every 30 years. So when you cut them, all these disappear. This is like a carpet. Look, you can go down. Because it's all, it's a big, maybe three, four feet sponge of humus that has been accumulating as leaves fall and they break and they accumulate. These provide the nourishment that this other growth needs. Now when water reaches here, it can't run. Partly because it comes down very slowly, and also partly because of this sponge, it doesn't run. It percolates into the underground, and it goes and feeds the underground water reservoirs. If it comes into bare ground uh, in commercial plantations, much of it just runs off, and it creates floods downstream. Now. Eventually, the underground lakes go lower and lower and lower until some of the streams dry up and many of the rivers, which were huge, become but small streams. The land also dries up because the rainfall patterns changes. Because if you don't have all these leaves to hold huge amount of water, that evaporates and becomes condensed when it gets into the upper layers to come back to us as rain, then of course we don't get rain. And that completely changes the amount of water the farmers outside the forest will get. And that begins a cycle of eventually people starving to death because crops have failed, they have not harvested sometimes for once, sometimes uh, several times, maybe three, four times down the road. But the, the, the tragedy is that most of us do not make these linkages. And so when you remove that sponge, all these fans go. All this vegetation that is the, what we call the other growth in an indigenous forest, it goes. If you go into a, an exotic plantation, partly because they allow people to cultivate, but also partly because the trees are exotic species that kill everything else. The ground is, is bare, completely bare, with no vegetation whatsoever. And even when there is vegetation, it's grass, kikuyu grass, which is probably the only vegetation that seems to compete and is able to sometimes establish itself. But this other growth completely disappears. And that's the tragedy of clearing these indigenous ecosystems. Many, many people miss when we talk about indigenous forests is that they do not visualize this other growth. 
and the many species of animals and plants that thrive because of this ecosystem. And because it is an ecosystem, there is very serious interdependence between these species. As I say, these ferns won't grow if you don't have that humus. And of course, there would be no humus. There would be no humus if you don't have these trees that are gradually, constantly, continuously dropping their leaves. Because as you know, this is the tropics. Leaves, these trees never lose their leaves at once. But they do lose their leaves gradually, and they drop, and they create this wonderful sponge that sometimes can go deep even 10 feet. And that is something you cannot replicate. That is something only nature can create. And, and so it's just, it's just um, amazing. Something like this, absolutely extraordinary, most beautiful, growing because the environment here is perfect. It must be moist, it must be fertile, it must be sheltered from the sun and the heat and the heavy rains by these huge plants. It just, it's, it's, it's just so wonderful. Sometimes I'm absolutely unable to explain what I mean. So sometimes it's better when people see and they come in the forest and they see for themselves what we are talking about. Because sometimes describing doesn't do this system justice. There is a lot of confusion, but you know, this is how Mother Nature works. This is her at her best. And this is how she would like to be protected so that we too can be protected. You know, we, as the human species, we forget that we are part of this. We are part of this. When we die, these plants recycle us. We become part of this. So maybe we have been recycled many times. Sometimes we have been plants. Sometimes we have been animals. Sometimes we are humans. But we definitely as a species, tend to dissociate ourselves from this system and tend to separate ourselves from this system and definitely forget that we belong to this system. We are from this system. This system nurtures us. We are the food we eat, the air we breathe, thanks to these green fellows who clean the air for us. They take the carbon dioxide. That's why we are saying we need to plant many of them so as to help us stop the global warming because they take the carbon dioxide and they give us the oxygen. So, millions of them. Sometimes I think we really should go around saying thank you. Thank you so much for what you do so that we may survive. This is just beautiful. Some wonderful mushrooms growing out of this log that is rotting. These are the species we are talking about. They're there. And they are playing their role. And look at those mushrooms. Who would think? So as this log is rotting, it's giving new life. And that's what life is all about. As we die, we give rise to new life. That's the immortality. And to me, sometimes people say, when we go to heaven, we shall see God. It's when I see things like this that I know God is right here with us. God is here with us. We don't need a miracle. And you don't need to read the Bible to hear what Jesus was doing in Nazareth. 
These are the great miracles of God. The dead giving life. 